Let's now take a look at the synth architecture for the Mother 32. This is a semi-modular synth, which means that you don't need to do any patching to get sound. There is a pre-configured normal connection that already exists, very much like a fixed architecture synth, like many of the current Moog keyboard synths. But of course, all that normaling can be overridden by the patch bay. Before we talk about the patch bay, let's look at the main synthesis engine. It's quite simple actually. As you would expect, it's a subtractive synthesis model. There is one oscillator and you get two shapes, a pulse and a sawtooth. With the pulse, you get to adjust the pulse width with this dial. There is a global frequency control dial here. Think of it like a global tuning dial. You also get a glide dial which gives you the portamento effect between played notes. This dial sets the glide time. So if you want to disable it, just set it to the lowest value. You get a noise generator signal and you can crossfade from the oscillator signal to the noise with this dial. Instead of the noise, you can also have an external signal which can be patched in via the patch bay. As you would expect after the oscillator section, the signal is sent to the filter. You have a switchable low pass, high pass resonant filter with dials for the standard cutoff and resonance controls. After the filter, you have the amp section, which you can set to always on, or use the envelope generator as a control signal for it. Below here are the controls for the envelope generator, attack, sustain switch, and DK, which also doubles as the release control. So that's the main audio signal path. Let's now talk about the control options you get. We already know about the amp envelope generator control. This envelope generator can also be used to modulate the pulse width and the frequency depending on what you select here. You get a dial to control the amount of modulation. The envelope generator can also be used to modulate the filter cutoff, which also has an amount control and a polarity switch to invert the envelope generator shape. Next, you have an LFO with two shapes, square and triangle. This LFO can be used to modulate the pulse width and frequency, just like the envelope generator. And just like the envelope generator, it can also be used to modulate the filter cutoff. This VC mix style is quite interesting. It lets you crossfade between two voltages or even work as a VCA for other signals. The routing needs to be set up in the patch bay to make use of this. We will definitely explore this a lot in this course. Now you can plug in a 5-pin DIN connector and get MIDI into the synth, but if you don't have an additional MIDI controller handy, you can use these buttons to trigger the synth. You will notice the layout is mirroring a one-octave keyboard, and you have octave up and octave down switches as well. Besides all of that, you also get a built-in sequencer with lots of controls, which we will explore in depth in later tutorials. All the buttons over here are mainly associated with the sequencer. Then finally, there's the patch bay. Anything that is not possible with the front panel controls can be configured by using the patch bay. We are going to explore this in detail, but one general rule to remember is you should only patch outputs to inputs. All outputs have the white background, all inputs don't have any background. Another thing to keep in mind is that the labeling is above the jack. For example, this is the output of the triangle LFO, not this one. So when you see a label, plug into the jack just below to use that input or output. Alright, so that's the synth architecture. Now before we move forward, there's one thing you should keep in mind, especially if you are new to the analog synthesis or Eurorack world. Everything you are dealing with here is all in voltages. Voltage control oscillator, voltage control amplifier, voltage control filter, etc. When you make a patch connection, you are sending voltage generated from one place to another or you are sending a fluctuating voltage to the output to hear the result. So before you actually start patching things, it would be good to get a general idea about voltages in the analog world, and we will explore that next.